everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in yet again. I wanted to answer a lot of your questions on social media advertising, influencer marketing, whatever you want to call it. Ads, gifted items, ASA regulations, um, what influencers are paid, etc, etc. Because I know a lot of you guys have a lot of questions and I also think that people are not very transparent about it online. And coming at it from the social media consultancy side, I also know about it a lot from the brand's point of view. And I think that is kind of quite a good way to look at it from as well as from the influence point of view. So without further ado, do I just thought I'd explain what influence marketing is why people use it you know what good is it for the brands what good is it for the consumer and how it works with influencers as well influence marketing is essentially product placement selling items through the use of social media so whether that is taking a picture you know of, of someone with a product using sort of an influencer in a marketing campaign on social media whatever it is it's basically using the social media platforms to promote a product I think that kind of goes without saying it's useful to brands and it's grown so quickly in the past because we like to take advice from our friends and what a billboard doesn't have is direct interaction with certain people when you follow someone online whether they are a celebrity or your friends or you know a middling or micro influencer you have some sort of affinity with them so you've chosen to follow them for a particular reason and because of that you tend to trust what they say a little bit more than if it was just a billboard or a tv ad or you know whatever it is someone that you don't really know or some model doing product placement on TV versus some that you've chosen to follow who you are invested in sharing a product that they use hopefully on their own social pages. That's the kind of theory behind it from a brand point of view. The reason it's useful to them is that people are much more likely to engage with the advertising on social media than they are with the advertising on TV or, or a billboard or whatever it is. From the consumer point of view it's more useful because you kind of know the background of the person that's promoting it. So say you follow someone for fitness and they're promoting a pair of leggings for running, kind of personal to me. You know that hopefully, if you trust what they say, that they use those leggings and they're gonna promote something that's actually gonna be useful to you as well. And that means that rather than, you know, seeing it on some person who's six foot tall, who probably doesn't run and has no muscles, for example, you're seeing it on someone who you know is kind of like a, a real person, whatever that means, and actually does running in a, their everyday day life and they're not just a model promoting it they're actually someone who uses that product yeah in terms of consumers it's much more useful to to be seeing influencer marketing than it is to see tv ads and yet there's obviously some negativity because i think a lot of people feel a little bit cheated where the people that they follow who they follow for advice about whatever it is are then starting to promote products to them and and maybe trying to get them to buy certain products to be paid for their job or whatever it is i'm going to try and clear up a little bit uh, things about that as well. So there's a really interesting report in this magazine here. It's an industry magazine about influencer marketing and I tend to read these things a little bit so that I can better work with brands that I consult but it's also really interesting from my point of view to see what my followers for example are thinking about the sort of adverts that I'm doing. I tend to know because you guys tell me which is great but it's also kind of interesting to see on a larger scale how influence marketing is changing and what people think of it. Thankfully it says here 54% of consumers agree that disclosures such as hashtag ad and hashtag spawn do not diminish the credibility of content but that also means that 46% of people who see the hashtag ad think that that means that the content is less authentic and that really concerns me though it doesn't particularly surprise me what I struggle with is the fact that I think a lot of influencers certainly micro influencers and middling influencers only work with brands that align with their values and I think it's kind of useless to be working with brands that don't align with your values because people can tell and people stop following you and they don't trust what you say and essentially you are useless then to a brand because they know that whatever you promote is not going to be received well by your followers so it's in everyone's best interest to only be working with brands that align with your values and with your content and not with brands that pay you a huge amount of money but that everyone's going to look at and say okay uh why is this fitness influencer promoting a uh, smell of vodka or whatever it is like they don't even drink um so yeah it's you know everyone should be promoting products that align with their values and actually it says here so what are your greatest concerns relating to social media influence 
influencer marketing at present and 44% of people say their greatest concern is knowing if an influencer's content is authentic or real as it's made out to be and I can totally see how that's an issue. Coming at it from the brand point of view, once again it doesn't make sense to work with influencers who are promoting products left, right and centre, partly because your product won't stand out and they'll be promoting one product one day and another product the next day and when it's something like this is the shampoo that I use, that's probably not going to change on a day-to-day -day basis. It might change on a month-to-month -month basis but chances are if they're promoting one product one day and then another product the next day, those products can't both be used at the same time so they probably don't actually use that product and that's a good thing to look out for actually if you're wondering whether something's authentic or not. Whereas if it's trainers for example, people can wear different trainers for racing, for trail running, for road running and then if they're a keen runner they might wear different trainers for different types of runs, so tempo runs, endurance runs, whatever it is, sprints, you know. So that sort of thing can change day to day. In that sense they might be promoting different brands or even different shoes from the same brand and you can still think that that is authentic and quite often if you look at their other photos on their page and they're using that product and not tagging them or or not doing an ad for them then you can know at least that is an authentic advert that they've done in the past because they're still using those products and and even if they were only introduced to the product for the first time when they were asked to do the advert the fact that they're still using them months on is indicative of the fact that they actually really love the product and that's probably something that may work for you as well and that that's authentic and real and so I'm going to answer how brands work with influencers and how these sort of adverts come about and really quickly essentially what a brand does. I'm going to say it from my side. So as a middling influencer who has an agent, the brand will go to my agent usually and say we'd love Flora to work on this campaign, this is what it's about, this is what we're promoting, this is our budget, this is how many posts that we want, what can you offer? And Izzy, my agent, who's great, will go back to them and say yep Flora's happy to do two posts for this brand or no she's not, that's not on brand for her and this is the budget we can offer and these are the sorts of posts that we're going to do and quite often the brand will provide a brief so if it's a running shoe they'll provide certain pictures that they want and they don't want someone to just be like fake running in the street and I've worked with brands before that have said specifically no fake running because everyone can tell that you're fake running. They actually want real runners who are doing real running in their shoes. So they'll provide a brief and a mood board. The product will then be sent to me and I'll take pictures in it, doing what I do. That, alongside a caption, will go back to the brand who will accept or decline. The more followers you get, the more freedom you get on your caption quite often. So I think in the past, brands have been really keen to be like, oh, you have to say these 10 points on this product. You have to say that it's got loads of cushioning, that you feel really lightweight, that you can do this, this, this. And essentially the whole caption just ends up being like a press release about this shoe. And it's totally the most inauthentic thing you will ever see in your entire life and that is where really bad ads come in and the problem is that brands will often or in the past have often not accepted content that is authentic because they want you to fit in 10 points about the shoe or whatever it is. We've started, influencers I think have started pushing back on that a little bit because they're like okay you've come to me so that I can reach my own audience who trust what I say about x y and z products because you like the way that I do my posts. So what is the point then in saying you need a photo that looks like this with these 10 points in the caption with this offer and these hashtags there is essentially no point in that because you might as well just be putting up a billboard and saying come and buy our shoes this is the press release more and more now I think the influencers are saying this is the stuff that I'm gonna write this is relevant to me and my audience I can include some stuff about your shoe because that's the entire point in advertising it but it has to be written in my own words I think that is what I've started doing as well and thankfully the more followers you get the more people are kind of going to be like okay well you clearly know what you're doing so you can do that. It's something I've definitely struggled with in the past and it has led to bad ads and even with products that I really love it's led to bad ads and that's such a shame because that's not how influencer advertising should work. Now when I consult brands I'm like okay you don't want to be dictating what this influencer is saying because their followers are loyal to them and not to you and your brand so let them say what they want to say. You can include some like hashtags or you know some specific points about the product but you don't want to be dictating exactly what they're going to say. They've come back to you, they've said this caption's great, maybe change this a little bit here and then this can go live on this day and this day which is when 
say the two product releases are or something like that one thing that happens quite frequently and that i know i'm not alone in is that a lot of campaigns start and end at the same time so a brand will come to you one month depending on how organized they are maybe the month before maybe two weeks before they want stuff to go live maybe three months before it doesn't really matter it varies quite a lot but quite often their campaigns will all end around the same week and so you've said yes to three campaigns four campaigns maybe even five you know a couple of weeks apart because you've had no work or whatever or you just want to do the campaigns and all of a sudden you've shot this content and it's all going live in the same week that's really stressful for an influencer especially for me because i like to make my content varied i don't like it to all be ads in general i think the average number of ads i do per month is um, about five percent five point five six percent whereas some months when when campaigns finish so for example spring summer collections autumn winter collections yeah generally like pre-summer and pre-december all campaigns <laughs> tend to end in the same week so you guys are absolutely bombarded with like buy this try this do this and I can see how that can get super duper annoying the problem is I've accepted these campaigns three weeks four weeks apart I have no idea necessarily when these are gonna end when they want the post to go live and they all come back to me at the same time and say this needs to go live now and I'm like okay well I've got an ad on Tuesday and I've got an ad on Thursday but you want me to do this on Wednesday there's nothing I can do. I've already shot the content and I've already done the caption. I've already done the work. So to get paid for the campaign, I can spread it out as much as I can, but the content still has to go live within a particular week. And I know that that is something that a lot of influencers struggle with, but essentially it is our job. And after say three, four weeks of no payment, you really want to be getting um, some ads in. And so that is a little bit of a tug and war between followers and influencers and influencers and brands. It's like, please can we spread out our content the brand's like no you need to put it out now and the and the followers are like oh my god you're always doing ads so that's why that happens quite often people who don't do a lot of ads will suddenly be doing a lot of ads at the same time and that is why it's just campaigns end at the same time there's nothing really that influencers can do about it other than say can i spread this out a little bit please and the brand will say yeah or no sorry next thing you guys have sent me some questions on instagram about social media marketing the most commonly asked one of course is how much do you get paid or how much do influencers get paid and i'm not going to tell you my exact payment partly because i find it weird to be shouting about a salary online or anywhere really maybe it's something you talk about with your close friends but most people don't shout about their salary online so i'm not going to do that secondly it varies so much from campaign to campaign brand to brand it depends what i'm doing if i'm doing a youtube video if i'm doing an instagram post if i'm doing instagram stories with a swipe up or not with that or not with a swipe up it varies depending on each of those factors from the consultancy side of things i tend to say times your followers by 0.8 so 80 percent so so you've got 10 thousand followers you times that by 0.8 and you can get 80 quid so if a brand asks you at 10,000 followers you know we'd like you to do this post what do you charge you go back to them and say this is the fee that I charge so that's 80 quid I can give you one post for that or maybe give them a discount if they're doing multiple posts and this is something that when I'm consulting influencers or people who are just starting out their businesses um, on social media that's the kind of thing that I say to go in at and they might come back to you and say well you know our budget's really crap as they quite often do so we can't offer you that but we can offer you this that's like a good level to go in at and then you know discuss around that sort of thing quite a lot of brands do not have any budget and so they will do gifting and gifting is a totally different ball game to influence advertising though i think to the consumer it can quite often seem the same so to clear up some points on gifting for most influencers of a certain level so say with more than fifty thousand followers they will get sent products sometimes they'll be told sometimes they won't be told to their home address in the hope that they're going to post about them now in about december last year the asa which is the ruling body about advertising online said you have to disclose when products have been gifted and i think this is great because i think previously people were like oh my god look at my amazing dress and saying you know buy it or tagging them or whatever without saying actually that dress was gifted to them they haven't bought that dress and i don't think that's a problem but to say this has been gifted to me i still love it i still think you guys would also love it but just to let you know in the interest of full disclosure it has been gifted to me by the brand so yeah i just want to let you guys know now if you are gifted things nowadays if you're going to share it on your social media you have to say it's been gifted 
it's not the law but it is a regulation by the ASA uh, that is a guideline and if you don't do it you can be called out and if you continue to not do it you can be fined and I always say to people you know it's not worth doing that and also just in the interest of like morality and ethics I think it's a really worthwhile thing to do. But I think what followers have been seeing recently is people being like gifted 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 on all of their stories because if they tag or say you know this dress is from so and so they now have to say that's gifted and i think what people are thinking is oh my god they are doing only ads on their stories they are literally only sharing adverts and that's not the case so when a brand gifts you something you are under no obligation to share it unless you've accepted it on the premise that you share it but in general that doesn't happen above a certain follower level so if an influencer shares something that they've been gifted usually it's because they actually like it but they just so happen to have to tag gifted or say it's gifted because of the ASA regulations so once you get to a certain follower level you will probably have been sent quite a lot of products so for example for me I've been sent a lot of leggings and a lot of pairs of trainers and a lot of sports bras and basically that's it that's like my entire wardrobe is just sports clothes so anytime I tag those products which I do because I know that people are going to ask me quite often you know where are your shoes from where are your leggings from whatever I then have to also say gifted which then starts to look like an advert and I just want to clear up the fact that that's not an advert that's not paid the influencers are under no obligation to post about that they just happen to be wearing the products that they just so happen to be gifted because that mo probably for a lot of influencers most of their wardrobe is actually gifted and therefore they have to tag if they're a good person <laughs> they have to tag gifted that is what all of that is about they are not adverts i guess if you don't like it just try and ignore it. The tags can actually be useful for people. So if you're wearing something and someone wants to know where it's from, it's quite annoying to have to reply to sort of 30 DMs about where your leggings are from. So I think that's why people quite often just tag it in the post. It's not so that everyone goes and buys it. It's just so that they can kind of fend off the questions in advance of them happening. So I think that's that done. You guys have asked a lot of questions online. So I'm just going to try and answer some of the other ones. How much do influencers make? Well, we've been through that. Totally varies. I know people who have been paid tens of thousands of pounds for campaigns. So that will be an ongoing campaign. So maybe three months of posts, six months of posts, maybe exclusivity. Exclusivity means that you can't post about other brands during that time. And then I also know people who have been paid 20 pounds per post, 50 pounds per post. I was paid uh, 20 pounds per post when I was first starting out. And I was so excited about that. Honestly, like it was the highlight of my week was when someone would message being like, can you do like six posts for 20 pounds and i'd be like oh my god yes thank you so much which is pretty cool but thankfully influencer marketing has moved on since then what are your thoughts on brand trips could they be seen as bribery yeah so influencer press trips i see as perks of the job in the same way that when you're hired by a business you get your pension matched you get christmas parties you get other job perks whether it's insurance or like i don't know I actually don't know. It's been so long since I've been at a desk job. There are perks to working in a business that you don't get when you are an influencer. And there are also perks to being an influencer that you don't get when you're working in a business. Like that goes without saying. I think brand trips are kind of like perks of, the kind of job perks of working as an influencer. Sometimes they're necessary. So for example, if you're going to review a hotel, you need to go to the hotel to be able to review it. And quite often they'll do that as part of like a bigger press trip. And I don't see that as bribery. That's just work. It's a cool part of work, but it is still just work when brands take groups of people out to say ibiza to promote a drink i don't see that as bribery you tend to say in advance what you're willing to do or what they want from you in return for the trip to ibiza and you've agreed on that so they don't say like you can only come on this if you post seven times a day you tend to say okay i'd love to come on this trip because i love your brand and i can do you know a post a day in return because they've paid for your flights and for the hotel i don't think of that as bribery i can see how it could be seen as bribery but i honestly just think like it's payment in non-monetary form most people get paid in monetary form in their everyday jobs sometimes influencers get paid in the clothes or or whatever okay uh sophie says what do i want to know all of it okay well hopefully i've answered a lot of your questions can you negotiate the price or is it fixed it is always negotiable to a certain extent obviously some brands don't have money so other brands have too much money so you can always negotiate that's where the agent comes in they tend to be able to handle contracts for you so i've been stung in the past where i've done a certain amount of work 
work and then the brand has turned around and been like okay well we're not paying you or just you know ghosted my emails or whatever it is and having a contract there gives you a certain level of security and that is the benefit of having an agent and I think you can get an agent anywhere from sort of 20,000 followers it really depends what you're doing and what industry you're in my boyfriend for example has over 60,000 followers he's never been paid for a post in his life he also doesn't have an agent because he's never been paid for a post in his life so it really does depend on the industry you're in payments and also agents and all that kind of stuff what can i do if i see an influencer post a photo etc and it looks like an ad but they haven't disclosed so as i said it is the asa regulations that you have to hashtag ad and also say if a product's been gifted if you think it is an overt ad and it hasn't been disclosed i think you can report the post i find it especially annoying when celebrities do this quite often most of their posts are ad and to be honest they are the worst for hashtagging it so i think in that case it's definitely potentially worth flagging that to the ASA. If it's someone with 20,000 followers who is just doing their best and maybe doesn't know the regulations, it might be worth messaging them and saying, just wondering if your last post doesn't add. If so, you know, it might be worth hashtagging just so that people know, so that you've disclosed it. A lot of people don't know the new regulations. And I think as a blogger starting out, especially if you've grown really quickly, you just don't have any idea, like no one has told you. So be a little bit kind, I think there's so much misinformation out there and people are just doing their best so maybe let them know some people are assholes though so you can probably call them out if they continue to do it i think that's it hopefully that answered some of your questions about gifting ads agents prices etc etc obviously i come at this from the brand point of view quite often with the consultancy that i do so if you have any more questions regarding either influencers or brands come find me on instagram you can dm me or comment on any of my photos and i will get back to you i really hope you enjoy this and that i hope that it cleared up some of your questions and i will see you next time goodbye